The big question is, what type of scams are they going to run to try to divert from this? There is so much Trump news. Um, we have Roger Stone, who is particularly spiffily dressed today, uh, joining us. And he's got big breaking news coming up in about five, six minutes uh, that deals with the state of New Jersey. Uh, but first, wow, uh, I tell you, Hillary having five-minute coughing fits. Then when she calls it a conspiracy theory, she has a coughing fit, a fake press conference, coughing fits. They're rolling oranges at her now to answer questions. This has entered Caligula-level bizarroness. Marie Antoinette on steroids. I mean, I just sense collapse and failure. And I love the smell of victory for Donald Trump in the morning. Briggs it, too. What do you say, my friend? Uh, it's an exciting time to be alive, Alex. Uh, I, uh, I agree with virtually everything you just said. Uh, Trump is on the upswing here. CNN poll showing him leading by one. Geez, that wasn't supposed to happen. Hillary uh, gets miffed when asked about it. Uh, continuing stories about her health based on our observations. They attacked both you and I last week by name. Uh, claiming that we had it was a vast right-wing conspiracy. No, we can see the woman's not well. It's obvious in her scheduling and her coughing fits and her falling down and her needing help up uh, the steps. And the EpiPen and the WikiLeaks where she wants Parkinson's medication. You know, uh, as we have said on this program, I think Julian Assange may have the keys to this race. Remember that in the Clinton Foundation scandals, the Clinton's defense has always been you have no proof. Not we didn't do it, but you have no proof. I mean, yes, we took millions from a Russian conglomerate, in essence, that wanted control of uranium production in this country, and we gave it to them, but you can't prove that those are related incidents. Well, perhaps Mr. Assange can prove that. Uh, then you have Trump's incursion into the inner cities, uh, is talking about what the policies of the Democratic Party have done for black Americans and for our cities. And I hear that there may be similar trips in Baltimore, uh, in Los Angeles, and other uh, urban areas that are dying under the policies of the Obama administration. You have uh, the warm up for the debates. Uh, and Alex, I think the most important issue which you put on the griddle, will things get so bad that it only increases the chances that the Clintons will engage in both voter fraud and election fraud. That was my first question for you, but I wanted you to have the out of the gates first, first, first issue. Well, I mean, they go from saying it doesn't exist four and a half weeks ago, I'm insane, that's that crazy Texan, uh, when they just stole the nomination from Sanders, to now, oh my God, the Russians, it's total fraud, Trump's working for Putin, Alex Jones, Roger Stone, they're evil, we've got to t bring in foreign observers, all hands on deck. I mean, they did, I guess, want us to be able to point out fraud if they tried to pull it so now they want to be the guardians of the election when they do try to steal it it seems like a major blunder for them am i wrong and i think you're right look as i said on this very show watch the watchers you said it a month and before they did this, it this will be done so look i i've never touched a nerve with the political establishment in almost 40 years of being active in american politics like anything like the piece i wrote for the hill in which I cited the Stanford study that indicates that Hillary rigged the election against They, they went completely ape over, talk about Streisand effect. I mean, that story was big, but it wasn't getting huge attention until they flipped out. And then I cited the Princeton professor, Professor Appel, who shows that these machines can be easily hacked. Uh, I highlighted uh, Dr. Bob Fetrakis uh, from Ohio State Community College, a political science professor, his excellent work showing the hacking of these machines, the CBS video, and good God, the uh, the uh, running dog lackeys of the Clintons, the Soros-funded Media Matters for America, uh, and uh, their so-called correct the record, which ought to be called distort the record, went insane. So their entire narrative is imploding. Hillary is the emblematic. Should block Roger Stone. C-SPAN shouldn't even talk. We should block discussion of the potential. So what does this signify? What does this signify? They tried to shut down discussion of election fraud and voter fraud. Now it's front and center. Where do they go from here? And they see Donald Trump gaining. And they see him making incursions into Democratic turf. Uh, and the, therefore, their panic gets greater. And, and their attacks on us become more shrill and more personal. Alex Jones isn't running for president. Roger Stone is not running for president. Hillary Clinton uh, is going to have to try to divert 
from the from the avalanche of bad news she has coming. I predict to you, Alex, here and now, that the Haiti scandal will blow even further over open. For those the, that don't know, she stole almost all the money. Well, working closely with the Bushes, I think they stole their half all, as well. Uh, and the entire backstory of our actions in Libya, which have resulted uh, in the uh, in the uh, putting women in Libya back 200 years to medieval times under Sharia law, and Black Lives Matter, unless you live in Libya, in which case Hillary Clinton bombs you and has to go to the national credit card to borrow the money to do so. So we can get rid of Gaddafi, a guy who has renounced his nuclear ambitions, who's sharing his intelligence. Sure, so what would you do tonight if you're Trump? He only has 30 minutes, they're gonna be attacking him, they obviously wanna make him look like the gotcha moment. Uh, what do you predict about tonight? Uh, look, Trump is uh, hes very good on his feet. He, he is, uh, remember, he didn't come to politics from the world of, of uh, politics and elective office. He came to politics uh, as a celebrity on the world stage. Uh, who uh, who handles himself very well when the camera's on. I I'm not worried about uh, his ability to handle her. He knows the book on her inside and out. Uh, the more he reads, you can read it in Clinton Cash. You can read it in my book, The Clinton's War on Women. You can read it in uh, Dr. Jerome Corsi's new book. It it's all there. This is the news about the Clintons that was suppressed in the 80s. Uh, and now you've got the breaking scandals. In the failures of the Obama administration, Trump goes into the Hillary debates. looks so shook up. I know we have a big announcement we're about to make. Hillary looks so, we've got plenty of time here. We can go over, we need to. I'm going to skip this break. Hillary looks so shook up right now, totally freaked out. Assange has given us hints how the media is being run by her, how she's got thousands of emails she's claimed she didn't have that are marked secret. He said that's coming out in the next week. And then even more, uh, you know, we can think about what those tidbits are, but we already learned that she's advising the Chinese president for money and uh, from other world leaders. I mean, this lady is just, is a whore politically. Yeah, no, look, she's not a liberal. She's not a progressive. She's a crony capitalist. It's all about the money. It's always been about the money. Everything was for sale. Look, Bill Clinton, without any question, and I wrote it for InfoWars, Bill Clinton traded military secrets, missile technology secrets, to the Chinese in return for uh, uh, Chinese funny money, Chinese campaign contributions that were laundered. That's treason. The statutes for treason have no statute of limitations and the penalty for conviction for treason Death. is execution or incarceration. So uh, it's all back on the table. They're the ones who decided to get well, back. Well, I'm not just saying this, and I, and I know you're an eternal pessimist or realist, but I sense defeat of the globalists, defeat of the Clintons. I mean, I think, and I know there's still 60 days to go or 59 days, but I sense panic in their ranks. And so let me ask you this, and then we'll go to our special guest you brought us. What on earth do you expect them to strike back with? I mean, this is a wounded lion uh, or goblin creature, a Roger Stone of... Uh, the stone called truth.com what do we look for yeah this is kind of ironic alex because the problem is that they're already rolling out their old playbook and it's not working look we'll just decimate trump as a racist as a bigot as as a misogynist uh he's trigger happy he's crazy uh the, it worked on barry goldwater but that was a long time ago and it's not working and that's what's making the yeah this panic. is not 1963 uh, number one. Uh, and number two, I mean, look, I, I really get tired of this. They continually attack me as a racist. I marched with Al Sharpton in favor of the reform of New York State's racist, draconian Rockefeller drug laws. I raised money for the campaign to, to uh, reform that law, uh, while the spokeswoman who calls me a racist for Hillary Clinton was not even in diapers. So, uh, Calling Trump a racist is part and parcel, and it's not working. In the well, it's like I, we go out to this gay pride parade. They're screaming, "Donald Trump hates us. He's horrible." And the guy was an advocate before anybody was. It's just these people are are, are almost so dumb they almost don't deserve Donald Trump. No, look, I had I had Chris Barron, who's a very articulate uh, gay community and Republican activist uh, in Washington on my radio show, Stone Cold Truth, last week, and he outlined the case for gay people 
in the post-gay marriage era, where that decision is at least currently a, a decided matter, one that I support, by the way, because I'm a libertarian, uh, and therefore I think gay voters are starting to shift to their personal safety after the or horrific Orlando killings, and who will protect them from Islamic terrorists? And then secondarily, they're looking at economic prosperity. Come on, Hillary you. coughing and hacking and stumbling around is emblematic of a collapsed society. Now, you, you're giving us a big announcement today. It's been hinted at for a while, but very exciting. I, I always enjoy seeing this individual you know, out there speaking out. And I have to tell you, if, if Al Franken can be in the Senate, this guy uh, does need to be governor. Tell us, tell us uh, the next shoe to drop there in your famous activities, uh, Roger Stone, in the great state of New Jersey. Well, you know, I uh, always thought that Ronald Reagan, uh, and to a certain extent Donald Trump, being people who came from outside the confines of, of career politicians, uh, brought a certain celebrity status to their candidacies, and therefore that celebrity status allowed them to be listened to where they could make uh, the case for their ideas. Uh, and uh, yesterday on Fox with Neil Cavuto, my friend Joe Piscopo, the Saturday Night Live veteran, uh, who's now a very hot radio talk show host, and uh, who's gotten more and more outspoken about how he sees the political system being dysfunctional, he told Cavuto that he was uh, going to seriously consider a race for governor of New Jersey next year, most likely as an independent. Uh, I had uh, lunch with Joe today, uh, and he, he really has not only a very good grasp on the issues, but he has no ties to the failed policies of the past. He has no investment in the Republicans or the Democrats. He lives in one of the most uh, dysfunctional, high-tax states in the country. Uh, and he told me today at lunch he's going to make a serious consideration of the race. He's going to look at all the factors, but that everywhere he goes across New Jersey, Alex, people tell him that he, sh that he should run for governor, that he should clean up the state. Uh, and it's become, it started with one or two. He now tells me everywhere he goes, he hears it. Uh, at first he was flattered, but kind of thought, well, I'm an... I always like seeing him on TV when he talks on the news about issues. He seems like a really smart guy. And well, I might have got my wires crossed, but is he at your place right now? I have dragged him with me, and he is uh, very anxious to talk to you about what's on his mind. All right, well, let's bring Joe Piscopo, who I always love on Saturday Night Live, and I love seeing him on Fox, you name it. I hope he does run for governor. Now, Joe, you've teased us before in 2004, so let's, let's, let's bring Joe in here, uh, into right. the screenshot there. In fact, you guys right. sit in your lap if you want. The time I had uh, Christopher Walken on, he actually uh, sat in his lap. Hey, there you are, buddy. You look sharp. How are you? Yeah, man, you know what? Hanging out with Roger Stone. This is wild. It's like a museum around here. I got I got Nixon posters. I got Reagan posters. It's wild. Wow. Talk about the state of this country. So I hope you're running for governor. I mean, is this the big announcement right now, or are you just going to tease us? No, you know what? I got to look into it. I, I've been on Neil Cavuto's show. Neil's been pushing me on Fox, you know, to go in. And then, like uh, Roger said, I just kind of went on the radio, and we started talking about it. And on Neil's show, people are saying, you got to do it. You got to come in, you got to run because everybody's so fed up with the system, the rigged system indeed. You know, and the, the Democrat, you know what? I'm a lifelong blue dog Democrat, Alex. I, and I just left the party a couple of years ago. And I, I'm not a Republican. You know, I'm a diehard independent. You know, I believe in America first. I honestly believe in that. And I think people are hearing that and they just want the system reset. And they feel a guy from the outside, like old Jersey Joe here, could do it. I got to tell you, I've always been a libertarian and didn't like the Republicans either. But I got to tell you, the Democrats have taken America-hating, out-to-get-us, bizarre behavior, yeah. working with ISIS, you name it, to a whole new level. And yeah. I think Trump's taken over the Republican Party. I don't even see him as a Republican. I see him as a populist. So maybe running for an independent might be good for you. But getting with Stone over there, he's a smart guy in New Jersey, obviously. They say he's the best in New Jersey. Maybe run as a Republican. I mean, take over the party, my friend. You know what? That's an interesting. Can I, I can I can I steal that idea, Roger, from Alex? Can we do that? Sure. He say he's going like this. Yeah, we could maybe do that. But you know what's upsetting as a Democrat? I got to tell you, I sit before you as the spokesperson for the Boys and Girls Clubs of New Jersey. My heart goes out to Adris kids because they were for the grace of God. Go why? Go all of us, man. And I see in the eyes of these children myself when I was a kid. So now you look at Chicago. Alex, five hundred people, in 2016, killed in the streets of Chicago. That's that's the Democrats allowing that to happen and it happens in new jersey you know and and i it's so unsettling when i walk the streets man and i walk the streets of the inner cities and i see the upset 
And then who do we who do we turn to to go to the inner cities? It's Donald Trump. I've been railing on that my on my radio show for the last three years about that about getting a Republican, you know, in, or, or or somebody in that you know arena to go to, to go to the inner cities, and it's Donald Trump. So it is time to take it back. It's That's right. Joe Piscopo is our guest. Your audio is pretty good, my friend. But as a radio guy, if you can a little bit forward, it might be a bit better. What made you leave the Democratic Party? And what's got you to the point, Job is a successful guy in your, you know, your life, to want to get in this arena of politics? It's obviously not for fame and fortune, but because you're concerned. Well, you know, I got a lot of kids. In New Jersey, I have a child at every exit. And uh, I tell you, I love kids. I'm a dedicated father. The taxes are insane in New Jersey. I can't pay any more taxes, man. I think the IRS is a criminal organization. And, I, and then I saw how the Democrats are really deserting the inner cities and, help, and not helping out these kids like they should be. And, and, and I'm telling you, it's the Democratic Party. I'm an old JFK Democrat house. I was for years. You know, my family came from another country. They learned the language and the laws of the United States of America. They learned how to become an American. They didn't come here and say, you got to learn our laws. You know, we're from another country, and if you don't learn our laws, then we're going to kill you. We came and we learned how to be Americans, you know, and that was the old Democratic mantra. It's not like that anymore, man. And the Republicans aren't like that either. Well, by the way, I would vote for a JFK. Absolutely. It's like, how do the Democrats turn yeah. into this? I mean, I mean, let's be honest. Yeah, that's a great question. I don't know. It could be. It could be the enabling. It could be uh, maybe, you know what? And, and I try to be nice because I don't want to be vicious. And I don't want to be hateful. But maybe it was all with good intentions that the Democrats came in and, and they, they came in and they started saying, well, we need to help out. And they try to reach out in so many ways with entitlement programs. And now it's just gotten completely out of control. And I don't and also I don't understand the global nature of everything now. I mean, this whole TPP deal. President Obama is over on the Pacific Rim. What's he doing in the Pacific Rim? Come to Camden, New Jersey. Come to Patterson, New Jersey. Go to Elizabeth, New Jersey. That's what I don't get is that he got like 95 percent of the African-American vote. And, and he's visited less black communities than any president before him. It's like he just almost just pimps them, doesn't even care. You know what, Alex, don't get me started, because with respect to the office of the presidency of the United States, he, President Obama, has it in the palm of his hand to change this whole inner city structure. And he could do, he could go on a tent, rather than going to Martha's Vineyard, rather than going to Laos, he should go to Chicago, he should go to Ferguson, he should go to Baltimore, they should do a tour, and he should take... Uh, you know, he should take somebody with him, you know, in, this, in the celebrity arena to go around and really it will take it's going to take like what Donald Trump is talking about in the inner cities. It's going to take 10, 20 years to turn it around. But don't we owe that to the citizens of the United States of America? We're going to bring in tens of thousands of, of, of refugees from terror nations. We don't know what they're going to do when they're when they come in here. Why don't we help our fellow citizens? I agree. And by the way, they called it a flip flop. It's when I finally went from liking Trump to loving Trump because he goes, oh, the poor Christians being murdered. We've got to bring them all in. And they went, sir, they're bringing in 0.3 percent Christians when they're 20 percent of the population. They're bringing them in unvetted. They're mainly Wahhabists that invaded. He goes, well, we got to stop bringing them in until we vet them. Then they spend that. That wasn't a flip flop. As he got more info, he immediately changed what he was saying. That's what we're looking for. I know. Alex, you're right on the money. I got to tell you, I've known Donald Trump for 20-something years in good times. You know, and I'm an entertainer, man. You have good times. Yeah, it's been a minute or two on Trump. I mean, I know because you guys have been friends. I mean, what, what, how would you crystallize who Trump is? He's a good guy. He's a regular down-to-earth guy. He's a very humble guy. I remember seeing him. Uh, we go to charity events. He's always given to charity. That's what, how I know him most of all is going to charity events. I remember going to Atlantic City where you take a downturn in your career, as every entertainer does. Lord knows I've had those downturns. Donald Trump was always there. You want a hotel room? Joe, so come here. So you want to come stay at the, the hotel where I'm coming? Always remembering, always a good guy, never forgetting his friends. This is a decent human being. And I'm telling you, when you see the bluster, you see the buttons pushed, you know, it's not... Really, Donald, I just think he's a master marketer that is he is a step above and ahead of everybody else. But I'm telling you, the Donald Trump I know is a decent guy, a regular. Home. Can you imagine how great it'd be to have him as president to negotiate and stuff compared to Hillary? No, listen, man, I got to tell you, I'm pumped up on this, too. I, and on the rate my radio show, and if I may, if I could plug it, Alex. Please. We're, we're on AM 970, The Answer in New York, you know, right on. on and you can get it online, AM 970, TheAnswer.com. It is time for a reset. It is just time to go out of the box. I don't hate Hillary. I want to put all the hate aside. But she does look like a corpse. I mean, what do you mean? I mean, the coughing fits. <laughs> you couldn't host your show with those coughing fits. How could she be the president of the United States?
I sent the left. I sent a note to her recently. I said, I sent a note to one of her key guys to get her one of those like, cough drops. I have cough drops that could help that with that. I don't know how she doesn't know that. But that aside, that aside, she is the machine. That, that's all the machine. Talk about rig, man. Talk what they did to Bernie Sanders. You know, whether you like Bernie, whether he's a socialist, like him because he's a socialist or not, the guy was organic. It was organic politics on the left. And it's very, Donald Trump is very much the same way. It's organic politics. Don't give me the machine. We are so tired of the machine. And when people come to me, Alex, and they go, hey, man, you got to run. You got to run. Get in the office. It's taking it back. Joe, it's I know you got to go. Speak of the devil and do your own show. Joe Piscopo is our guest. Three-minute break. Come back. Say bye. I'll say bye to Roger. We've got our next guest coming on. The show's almost over 25 minutes. But Joe Piscopo is our guest. We're going to pop back in three minutes. All right. If you are a radio listener, we've got something coming up very special in a few minutes after Joe Piscopo leaves us with Roger Stone. Leanne McAdoo, one of our star reporters, is going to roll me oranges. And then that's how I answer questions. Hillary won't have a press conference. She tried to have one and had to stop it because of hacking fits. And But you're allowed to roll her oranges. And I came in and told the crew this a few days ago as I'd heard about it and again today. And they go, that's not true until I pulled the articles up. Joe Piscopo, this is, I mean, I know we're not bashing Hillary here. Obviously, we never do that. But the new level of, we're, as a comedian, who the hell makes up like, you don't ask the emperor questions. You roll them. You roll them oranges. <laughs> I don't. You can't make it up, man. You know, I, I come into the radio studio every morning. You know, we do six to nine East Coast every morning. And Alex, you can't make it up, man. You know, it's like even whether it's about what's happening with Hillary and, and how they take the narrative on the news. The mainstream media takes the narrative on the news and everything's bad about Donald. They'll say something bad about Donald, then they have to do an FCC equal time, but what they do is they'll go to like somebody, Tim Kaine, and they'll say, well, th Tim Kaine will say something bad about Donald Trump. It's like, they think we're stupid. I think they think we're stupid. You can't make it up. It's an exciting time to be on radio though, man. Because again, you can't, you can't make it up and it's just time to take it back. JoePiscopo.com, I'd hope to get you back up in the future. Always love your comedy, love the movies you're in, love seeing you on Fox. Getting back to, because I want you to be able to finish when we hit the break. Yes about something outside the machine, a reset, yeah. something yeah. new. I would right. love to have a female president. I could care less if they had great ideas. I mean, it's just emblematic how sick she is, the corruption, the lies, the WikiLeaks. I think the establishment better watch their butt, pull back, and let Trump get in there and then try to blame their mess on him. If I was them, and that's their only hope. I think they try to steal this from Trump. They got big problems. Alex, they're scared. They're scared. The lobbyists and the lawyers and everybody down in Washington is so scared. They're running for the hills. Nothing more. And I'm, sp I'm speaking on behalf of a lot of people who listen to my radio show. We just need that reset. It is our time. And if you don't take it back now, I got news for you. We ain't going to get it back. It's going to slip away. The tenor and the character of the United States of America is going to go away. It is our time. This is our time. And you can't stay home. I want to put a bumper sticker up, a hashtag. Don't stay home. On, when it, November 8th, you got to get out. Well, I think you just home. said it then. You've got to run for governor now then. I think you just said it. You are running for governor, Joe Piscopo. <laughs> if you say so, man, I'll, I'll listen to Roger to see what he says. But uh, listen, I appreciate respect and love so much the great state of New Jersey. And we, we are in a bit of disarray. The taxes are out of control. And there's a lot of folks that need help there. So, Brother, they uh, claim Texas, my beloved state, been here for nine uh, generations, founders uh, of the state. They say we're one of the best states in the country. Uh, you drive around, it looks like a war zone outside nicer cities. I mean, it's falling apart, too. If we're, if we're doing great, I can't imagine what New Jersey's like. Yeah, no, you know what? It's, it, it, there's, there's hope there. I just don't like I, do, I like New Jersey. I've been to New Jersey. Some nice it's, beaches. It's, yeah. it's beautiful. That's right. The Jersey Shore, where I, I live out in the boondocks out there, you know, and all those Italians, you know, I'm an Italian-American, I'm a proud Italian-American, but we got to bring the jobs back. You cannot let the jobs go away to the Pacific Rim. You got to bring the jobs back. That's so important. You could make just, just simple jobs in the inner city. Our cities. politicians we made money off selling our jobs. Folks don't get it. They yeah. wrote bills where you can't compete in this country. Joe Piscopo, I, I, I hope you're running for governor. I mean, I, I mean, I, what I heard is basically you were a little in before, but what are you, 90 percent there? I mean, when, when will we know whether you're going to run for governor or not? Yeah, well, well, you know, yeah, 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 a little while. I'm, I'm like, Roger's like giving me hand signals. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Well, yeah, you know what? You'll be one of the first to know. Uh, Alex, you know, but I'm just listening to everybody right now, but it's still a year and a half away, so I got to Well, you got to start riding that wave. AM970TheAnswer.com for here is a radio show. Thank you so much, Joe. Look forward to talking to you again, my friend. God bless you, Alex. Thanks, man. It was a nice surprise. All right, we're going to get, uh, it was a big surprise to have Joe Piscopo on, but I'm, I'm going to be honest. The time that Christopher Walken, I had another guest thought Christopher Walken wanted to be on the show. Christopher Walken came in and sat down on the guest's uh, lap. That was a little bit weirder. 
That was Belzer. We need to get him back on. <laughs> uh, the Twilight Zone continues. We have uh, uh, one of the most famous confidants of Richard Nixon now joining us, who, again, he admits was corrupt. But my God, compared to Hillary, seems like an angel. What would Richard Nixon think of this, this debacle of debacles we're witnessing? Let me tell you something, Alex. When it comes to corruption, Richard Nixon, uh, Hillary Clinton makes Richard Nixon look like St. Thomas Aquinas. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, look, uh, what was one of the counts of impeachment against Nixon? He abused the IRS and used it against his political enemies. Yet three of the women sexually assaulted by Bill Clinton get IRS audits, and no liberal says a word. By the way, I suspect there's more, uh, and we'll probably learn about that before Election Day. But... Alex, I want to salute you because you've had the courage to take on the whole question of both voter fraud, that is people ineligible to vote, phony voters, dead voters, voting multiple times, and the separate but related issue of machine rigging. Now, you have all these technical experts and all these political science professors and all these uh, experts telling us that rigging these machines is a simple, quick, easy matter. We know that a $15 device you can buy at, at Radio Shack or Best Buy allows you to vote multiple times. So uh, a group of activists, uh, in my case, who support Donald Trump, and also friends of mine who are in the Jill Stein and Gary Johnson camps, and I do have friends in both the Green and Libertarian Party, who just want an honest election. We have been uh, looking at how to stop the steal. Uh, and as you know, there's a couple ways. We've talked about scientifically conducted exit polls that would allow us to compare the results on a precinct by precinct basis uh, with, uh, with the actual results to see if we can find a pattern of fraud. Uh, I'm also intrigued by the whole uh, notion that the setup for the steal are the rigged polls. So the polls, uh, are they inflate the Democratic sample to increase Hillary's lead, or in some cases to create a lead, uh, and then they rig the machines, and augmented by voter fraud, to approximate the results of the poll. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy, but now that we're calling it, what do they do? And I want to ask you, you're always you're very accurate from what I've seen with internal polls. Trump seems to be surging ahead of her right now. A lot of the models show him winning in a landslide, or is, or is that is that a pipe dream? Well, I think it's a little premature, but he is having a very good week. His speeches have been excellent. He's demonstrating... Uh, discipline on the stump. Total genius going to Mexico, total genius oh, going to Louisiana, acting oh, presidential. That's, that's why that's Why didn't Hillary do that? It seems like she's totally blind. Well, she must be too ill to travel that far. Look, uh, here's the point. Uh, I have been talking to Dr. Richard Davis, who has an excellent program called OMO, which would create a multi-million dollar vo million voter national sample, a sample that is too large to be wrong. Uh, and I'm going to be working with Dr. Davis, who's a very impressive fellow, uh, to help implement a program so that we can debunk the phony polls. And I think you're right. Next is debunk the polls. But let's just take the big aggregator sites, the social networks. They go off massive samples. They say Trump's landslide. That's what every aggregate shows. That's yeah. what all this. It shows that the activity for Trump is three, four times just in activity, positively, what it is for Hillary. I mean, that's the real bellwether here. Well, I think to a certain extent that uh, that people uh, don't recognize that many way in many ways the tro the polls uh, are a precursor to movement. The movement now is with Trump. Hillary's static. Trump is on the move, uh, and, and the direction of the poll is more important than the current total because, frankly. The moment a poll is taken, it is technically outdated. No, I get it. But clearly, the fortunes have turned massively for Trump. Look for dirty tricks. Look for assassination attempts on Hillary. My God, the sky's the limit. Uh, we've got one final question with David Knight, who's co-hosting with me, Mr. Stone. We're going to let you go. So you're busy. You need to see Mr. Piscopo out. Thanks for bringing him on the show today. It's a surprise. And I, have one, uh, and I have one key point that I need to make at the very end here. Sure. Well, go ahead and make that point and bring David Knight in. Sure. Look, the last week, the mainstream media attacked you, attacked me saying that the entire question of Hillary's health was a right-wing conspiracy. And I have a dark heart. Here's my response, and it's very, very good news for the people at, uh, at Ricola and Ludens and Smith Brothers. Folks, mail your cough drops to Hillary Clinton at Hillary Clinton for President, 1 Pierpont Plaza, Brooklyn, New York, 11120. 
send her your cough drops because from what I can see, she needs them. I agree. Ricola. Again, let's give out our address. I agree. We should mail the press. We should mail the White House. We should mail everyone cough drops. That's a great idea. Uh, uh, Roger well, Stone, give out that address one more time. You can, you can mail them to Hillary Clinton at 1 Pierpont Plaza, Brooklyn, New York, 11120. Uh, and uh, I'm sure the Clinton campaign will announce how many cough drops they receive from the kind, benevolent citizens of the she United States. probably needs them. Let me ask one more question. Sure. I mean, you were on this three weeks ago, the conspiracy theory, the ridiculousness of the Russians. And I was like, okay, Roger, yeah, yeah. But now they've gone, you're right, totally crazy. We're all Russian agents. Trump's a Russian agent. No, the whole world hates Hillary. Everyone's sick of her. She really seems to have screwed up that they're going to take control of the elections because of the Russians. I mean, this is laughable. Well, and now they, now they, we have a new backstory. That yes, they're concerned about election rigging too, but they're concerned that the Russians are going to rig our elections. They call us conspiracy theorists. That's accusing Donald Trump of treason. Donald Trump is a man who loves. Meanwhile, you said it was coming out. Even the New York Times had to admit that it's actually the Ukrainian crazy right wingers run by Soros that are actually involved in our election illegally. Yeah, this is this is a terrific piece of the Financial Times that outlined how uh, Victor Pinchuk, uh, with his agent in the United States, Doug Schoen, longtime Clinton intimate, uh, are interfering in our elections. To the extent that there is any foreign interference in our elections, Alex, it's coming from Hillary's friends in Ukraine. Incredible. Then, David Knight, you were chomping at the bed. You come in uh, here. You know, Alex, uh, we've got this article that's up on the Drudge Report about Carville talking about how, uh, look, you can't rig the elections. Maybe you'll get 100 votes here and 100 votes there. And, of course, Roger Stone, <laughs> if people don't know, they can tell people about what happened in, in Chicago with the JFK-Nixon election or in Florida with the uh, Bush-Gore election. If that were true, if you could only rig 100 of them here and there, that would be enough to rig the election in a close election. But it's extensible, Alex. If you admit that the electronic vote voting machines can be rigged and one voting machine can be rigged 10,000 voting machines 100,000 voting machines can be rigged and we need to understand that the largest electronic voting machine company Smartmatic came from Venezuela it was created by cronies of Hugo Chavez and it has connections to the Soros Open Society Foundation it's ridiculous it, it, that's it's what we're seeing here Alex they want to talk about the Russians rigging the election Let's talk about the Venezuelans rigging the election. What we saw in Brazil was a situation where the, the woman who's just been impeached for corruption, those corruption charges were already known when she ran for re-election two years ago. She was behind 10 points in the poll. She was being booed in a soccer stadium of 60,000 people, and yet she won. Okay, this was just before the election. She, no, we she have, we have massive ahead. fraud. That's a great point. Yeah. Uh, final final comment. Uh, we're bringing Leanne McAdoo in here. Leanne McAdoo is about to do something with us. But uh, uh, Roger Stone, final comments. We're going to let you go on that. I think David hit a very key point. See, James Carville is trying to confuse people between voter fraud and election theft. These are two completely different issues. Carville, there's some validity to what he says. It's not hundreds, but it's thousands. Voter fraud does not not exist, as the left says. It exists. It is somewhat more limited. But election theft through the machines makes it an And it's bipartisan, and they keep trying to confuse the situation. Roger, we'll talk to you again soon. Come on anytime you want, my friend. StoneColdTruth.com. We'll talk to you soon. Help us in the struggle. Go to StopTheSteal.org. We're, we're not going to sit down and just let That's this That's right. We're organizing to fight it. That's why they're so scared. And you can also get the Bill Clinton rape shirt at InfoWarsStore.com. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. Now.